Initially for today's video, I had in mind I was going to review something else that was supposed to be coming in the mail, but unfortunately because of Hurricane Ian, all of my shipping is delayed. So this guy actually did come in the mail and I wasn't ever planning on doing a dedicated review, but I was like, why not? It looks interesting. So this is the Urban Decay and Robin Eisenberg Naked collaboration. This is available on the Urban Decay website right now and Urban Decay decided to collaborate with an LA based artist for this palette. Let's bring up the debate of the Naked palette, shall we? I think the Naked palette might be something that could be ready to be retired. Now, they know the numbers, they know what's selling, they're coming out with Naked palettes because they're making money from it. So clearly, I could be very well wrong. But when I think Naked, I think Neutral, and they have completely gone off track here. I mean, this is not Naked. Nonetheless, it's very, very interesting. Anyways, Am I sick of naked palettes? Yes. Is it getting boring? Yes. I don't know. I wasn't excited for this release for that reason, but now that I have it in my hand, I'm actually kind of excited about it. I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. So first of all, let's open up the discussion. What do you think of the Urban Decay naked palettes? Do you think they should continue the line? In some ways, I feel like they could almost do a revamp of all the naked palettes, maybe change up the packaging a little bit, improve the formula of all of them, and then kind of go at it that way. Revive the naked line and other thoughts I have I'm like they just need to drop it completely let me know your thoughts down below I think the best thing would be just to move on and accept the naked era for what it was and the impact that it had but I think we're beating a dead horse here but I do think the revival idea would be nice but let me know just want to talk about it. What do you think of the Naked palette? <laughs> let's talk about it. And let's talk about the new one that they just launched. So they collaborated, like I said, with an LA-based artist to do the artwork for this palette and bring alien makeup to life from a world beyond the galaxy, which is how they used to describe it. So you can get this palette right now on the Urban Decay website for $54. And here is the box that it's going to come in. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I did receive this in PR. I would not have bought it for myself. It would have been a drop had I put this in a shopper drop, but since it showed up, maybe some of you are interested, right? So here's the box. It looks so good. I mean, the artwork is beautiful. And here is the back here in case you need to see it. It has the explanation right here of the palette. And then what I think is actually quite exceptional about this palette is the actual packaging of the palette itself. It is so stunning. There's a back layer of glitter over here. Of course, you have the artwork, which is stunning. It looks even more beautiful in person. Gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. It says this palette has a 24-month shelf life, is made in USA of US and or imported materials, finished in the DR. Let's get a nice close look at the palette. So it does come with a brush with a packer and a blender, and then we have the palette. So it is a cool-toned, warm-toned palette. Obviously, the cool tones are here. The warm tones are here. If this side of the palette didn't exist, this would be the most boring palette ever, the most repetitive palette ever. But with this, I mean, I think it looks pretty cool if you just like cover this. I actually really like that. I'm excited to swatch it with you guys. Let's see if Urban Decay can improve in their quality because I will admit you guys, with the last few Urban Decay palettes, I feel like the quality has been very inconsistent. So let's see about this one. I always have a little bit of higher expectations with Naked palettes. So let's see. We have Moon Sand, which is a matte, Solar Storm, and Pulsar. And then we'll get Ion right here, which is a shimmer. Okay. Let's go ahead and swatch these. So Moon Sand is a matte cream shade. Has kind of a satin to it, honestly, though. Solar Storm is going to be a good transition. Pulsar has potential to be bad, but okay. It actually didn't swatch Chalky. That's what I was worried about. And then Ion, a gold. Okay, good, good. From previous Urban Decay palettes, I found that their shimmer shades have been chalky and chunky. So far, so good. Let's get into Mango Sun, which I think these two look really close, so that was a little unnecessary. Expo Planet, Foxfire. Now, what was this one? holidays. So this one right here is a look in of itself as well. So I feel like it's almost organized into quads, right? Mango Sun, which is completely redundant. I mean, I know they look different. This one is brighter. Oh, actually, they're more different in person. This is more brighter. I take it back. Expo Planet. It's okay. Fox Fire. 
the mats are feeling really, really nice so far. I'm actually happy about that. And then holidays. Okay, it's time for the party. I'm gonna dig into each of these shades. So this is what they look like by swatch. They felt a little dry, these three right here. We'll see how they swatch. So this is Home Planet. It's kind of like a periwinkle lilac shade, which is matte. Ice Crater. So not much of a pigmented base, but definitely reflective. Alien Babe. And then Space Pod. You know, these are all three very close. When you get down to the nitty gritty, when they're on the eye, I don't know if they're gonna look that different from one another, but here's the palette. I mean, she's cute. I don't know, Urban Decay found a way to use pretty bright colors and still make it kind of boring. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that I necessarily love this, but let's see how it applies on the eyes. All in all, it's swatched pretty well, which is something that I've noticed with Urban Decay palettes in the past. I haven't been so excited about. They have this look right here on their website. I'm gonna try and do something kind of similar to this because I feel like it plays with the warms and cools in the same look. So I think that could be interesting. So let me hop on one look and I'll be back. This look is very much different and out of my comfort zone, but it really allowed me to play with so many colors from this palette. And I have my thoughts and it's not all bad, honestly. It actually is pretty good. We're gonna start off with Moon Sand right here. And this has a satin to it that I didn't catch as much in the swatch. I knew it was satin, but it has even more of a sheen to it than I had anticipated, which is gonna look pretty all over the lid to brighten things up. But it looks really pretty on the underbrow. But I almost wish it was a little bit more shimmery for this purpose, but it's gonna look gorgeous all over the lid. And this is a nice shade. I can see it being very versatile. And I gotta say, the reference photo that I was using for this look, they definitely use shades that were not in this palette because <laughs> it's not matching up at all. But anyways, I'm gonna use the brush that it came with and Home Planet. I'm just gonna sneak a little bit of this in the inner corner and I have to say, you guys, this is such a high quality baby blue periwinkle-ish kind of shade. You can build this up to get full opacity and I'm really impressed because shades like this can turn into dust and then they don't hold their pigment. They have so much fallout and I mean, this does have a little bit of kickback. I'm using a really light hand and I'm getting really good pigmentation. It's very high quality. Really impressed with this. On this eye, I actually had to go over and redo it because I had gotten too much pigment from it and I wanted it to be a little bit more sheer looking. So I'm stopping it here, but just know you can get it much more vibrant. With the Sigma Dreamy Eye Perfector, we're going into Ion right here. And this isn't my favorite gold. You know, there's so many golds I have in my collection that are rich and pigmented and just dreamy overall. This has a really pretty shimmer to it and it has a little extra oomph to it than the average gold but it's a little bit drier than I prefer. It's not bad you can see it's sticking to the lid it just doesn't have that base or opacity that I'm looking for really for a high quality $55 palette but it's a nice gold. I'm not gonna say much bad about it. It's very interesting putting this I feel like next to the blue but let's work on blending those together. Let's go into Mango Sun right here. So this is a matte orange. I know very interesting. <laughs> It's a different look, but I'm having fun with it. And this is a matte shade, and you can see it has quite a lot of pigment. Honestly, a really good shadow. Very good quality. So far, I'm quite happy. We're just gonna leave that there. We're gonna blend it out a little bit more later. I'm taking a blinged brush, E14, and we're going into Ice Crater. So I'm getting this on the brush, tapping off the excess, and I'm pressing it down. So these do not have a very pigmented base. This gave me more than I thought it was going to, but obviously a matte shade out here would make a lot more sense, but we don't really have a dark matte shade in this palette, which is interesting. It's definitely Definitely missing a dark matte navy. This is the darkest shade that they have. It could go way deeper if you want to get more of a look. I understand this is like a galactic kind of palette, but I feel like a dark navy would fit the theme and also be very useful. I'm gonna take that and then I'm also gonna put it just a little bit over, not too much. 
We're gonna blend this. This actually looks way better than this one. I'm gonna take a clean blending brush and we're gonna work on this. So on the other eye, I ended up kind of blending both of these shades as well out here, but they looked the exact same to where it really isn't necessary. So that's the first indication about this palette is the blues, which are the fun pops of this palette. They all look the same and I'll show you that on the lower lash line. I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of Space Pod and see if we can get a little extra glimmer down here. Looks the same as the color I just used. <laughs> Don't even look at this eye. This one was an experiment. This is the winner here. So I'm going to go back and kind of add in all of the colors that we applied and bring them back to vibrancy. You know, like the little blue shade right here. Adding in more gold, more orange, blend in the dark shade. Let me put on some concealer and I'm going to show you how all of the blues look next to each other. I just popped on concealer and the Hourglass Elephant palette. So now my skin looks glowy and beautiful. Okay, let's finish off the look. So I probably would have done something different, but I wanted to see all three of the shimmery blues next to each other because they were looking the same when I was packing them in my outer corner. So how we're gonna do that, I'm taking the short packer brush from the Naked palette and I'm going into Home Planet just on the top. And I'm just gonna run this along my lower lash line along the whole thing. You should be able to see how pigmented it is. It's so good. So I would have like stopped here and put some gold in here and call it a day, but I had to do my investigative research. We're gonna start off with Ice Crater on my Bling Brush E14. And this is going in the outer third of the eyelid, right? Ooh, beautiful. I'm taking my Naked Brush again, and then we're going into Space Pod. So this one is like a little bit more green to it. I want you to see, can you see a difference? It's very, very subtle. Like not really, right? <laughs> I'm wiping off the brush. And then we're gonna go into Alien Babe. That gets right in here. What do you think? Can you tell a difference between the three blues? I can, but barely. If I take a step back, there is absolutely no difference. I just feel like they're very, very close to one another. There was so much potential to have fun with these. They just don't pull different enough on the eyelid. They have the exact same depth. So while there's very fine tonal differences here, it's kind of a waste if you ask me. And I could tell just by the swatches that that was gonna be a major issue. And let's be honest, this quarter of the palette over here was extremely important for this palette because this is what made it different from other names naked palettes and what was the pop of this and I feel like they didn't take advantage of that. They did a great job with the matte shade and I do think the blue shades are pretty. It's just we only needed one of them and then they could have added a matte navy and then a really light shimmery blue shade and that would have been perfect. But to finish it up because we ain't done girl, <laughs> I'm gonna take some of Pulsar right here which is like this really light pinky shade, peachy pinky, pinky peachy, whatever and that's just gonna go in the inner corner just for something different and then I wanted to bring just a little bit of gold back so we're taking some of ion and I'm just trying to really brighten up in this inner corner area is all since we had that really dark blue Julio let me finish liner lashes lips and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on this palette uh with the lashes and liner I like it. Oh my gosh. You know, I was worried for a second there, right? It looks kind of good. I think I'm going to wear this today. <laughs> Anyways, so here are my final thoughts on this new Naked palette. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty good. It's not amazing, and I don't think it's worth full price, $54. Zati's pricey. But the quality in here is decent. It's not exceptional. I think you can get better quality palettes at this price point. You know, I think Urban Decay as a brand needs to step up their eyeshadow formula. It's a good eyeshadow formula. There's a few shades in here that are really good. There's a few shades in here that could use some work. My biggest thing with the color story and the quality are these three at the end. They're not bad quality, but they're just way too similar. And I think this palette is too expensive for that to happen. That being said though, I do like this palette. So my overall advice, if you wanna take my advice, would be if you're interested in this palette and you're interested in this color story, if and when this palette goes on sale for 50% off, that is when I would pick this up. Almost all of the Urban Decay Naked palettes will go on sale for 50% off at one point or multiple points. So when this is on a discount, I think it's worth it. This actually is a pretty good naked 
Naked palette. I'm very, very happy with it. I think the mattes in here are really nice. It's the shimmers that can get a little bit on the dicier side, but I think it helps that I just really, really love this look right now. So make sure you comment down below your thoughts on Naked palettes. Are we over them? Are we still into them? And what do you think about this palette? Because this is definitely one of the more unique palettes that they have launched. And I don't know, like, I like it, but I don't love it. So <laughs> anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this review and being subscribed to my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.